and good morning. Let's go ahead and do our reading lesson for the day. I don't have slides. I'm not going to have any slides this week. It takes me a long time to put those slides together, and sometimes I just don't have the time to do it, so I haven't had time, but nonetheless, I do want to um, go over, I want to go ahead and tell you about the story we're going to read today. Now, actually, it's the only story we're going to have this week. Uh, let's see, yesterday, uh, we just talked about alliteration and assonance and those types of things, kind of a literary type thing. Today we're going to talk about and we're going to read the story. It's called His First Bronc. So I want to go over some words that you might come across you may not know. The first word is cinch. Now here's a sentence. To cinch a saddle, you just tighten the strap around the horse. So cinch used in this story is talking about, it's a verb, it's how you tighten up the saddle, you pull the saddle. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Another word that you might come across, hobbles. The horse could not run freely with the hobbles around his legs, something that keeps a horse from being able to run fully. Here's another, hackamore, okay? To break a horse, a cowboy uses a hackamore rope rather than a bridle, all right? So the bridle has the bit that goes in his mouth and around his nose and kind of up around his head, okay? But when you're breaking a horse, you're not gonna put a bit in, probably because you're not gonna be able to. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but you're, a hackamore basically just goes around his, his uh, little nose thing and kind of up like that. It's called a hackamore, all right? Uh, how about this word? Peeved. Josh was peeved when his when he discovered his little brother tearing up his baseball cards. Uh, have you ever been peeved? Kind of mad. <laughs> yeah. How about hankering? After seeing a video about flying, Joe had a hankering to become a pilot. Kind of like a I want to, uh, a desire, I guess you might say. All right, good deal. So let's look at our story. So turn in your reader book to page 14. That's where the book's gonna, the page is gonna start. Now, uh, because this is reading and because it's fifth grade, uh, I'm gonna have you read this story, okay? Now, I want you to think about as you're reading the story uh, called His First Bronc, um, I want you to kind of get in your mind the thought of, of Billy, um, and how he gets his first bronc. Okay, find out what happens. What do the guys say? How does Billy feel about it? Okay, all right, so I'd like for you to pause this and I'd like for you to read pages 14 through 18. Now, I don't know if your Nana will let you and I don't know if it matters, but if it helps to read out loud, Sometimes it does for me. Whenever, even sometimes when I read my Bible, I have to read it out loud, quietly, kind of whispering it to myself. But uh, however that might help you, um, if you want to pause it and go sit on the couch or somewhere where it's more comfortable, whatever your Nana will let you do to help you read. But focus on your reading, okay? And then when you come back, I'm just going to ask you a couple of questions, then I'll give you your assignment. Hey, did you finish reading this story? I hope you liked it. I thought it was a good story. All right, so let's ask a couple of questions. So the, the setting of the story, remember the setting is where and when it takes place. What's the setting of the story? I think it's a long time ago. Yeah. Out west, on a ranch of some sort. <coughs> Pardon me. <coughs> Pardon me. So, what clues did the author give you to let you know the time and the place of the story? How do you know it happened a long time? How do you know it didn't happen yesterday or last week? Nobody had a cell phone. Nobody had a camera. Nobody had all the fancy today stuff, did they? So, it kind of lets us know that it, um, that it was on a ranch a long time ago. Um... <clears throat> So, and what did you think of the dialect in the story? Remember, the dialect is not a different language, but it's the different way that people speak the same language. Kind of like people in Australia. They speak English like we do. They just speak it in a different way. Um, even in America, there's different people that have different dialects. We all speak well, we're all supposed to speak English. And those that live up north have a different dialect than those that live in the south. 
And even those that live in the South have different dialects. People in Texas have a different dialect than people who live in maybe Georgia or Alabama. So we speak the same language, we just kind of say it in a different way. What did you think of the dialect in this? Kind of like, um, he's some horse, ain't he? Or turned a blank face toward his father and hollered. Or lit into buckin', bucking. So they kind, of, kind of, they kind of had the country type. I bet you did like what I did and you just took to that pretty easy because it's kind of like how we talk. Yeah, so anyway. So how do you think Billy feels after he fell, fell off the horse? How do you think he felt? I think he was probably more determined. Gosh, dang, I'm going to get back up on that horse. That's probably kind of how he felt. So how did the author, well, how did he feel after he finally wrote his first book? <sighs> Confident and happy? How do you know? How did the author let you know that? He said something about being proud as a peacock, kind of strutting around. Just rode my first bronc. Yeah. So, yeah, kind of like that. So did Billy get to keep his first bronc? He did. How do you know? He broke the horse and he rode it. So it was his. It's his to keep. Kind of how they did in those days. All right, good job. I hope you enjoyed the story. All right, so your assignment today is going to be page seven. It's going to be a crossword puzzle at the bottom and some uh, at the top. It's going to be talking about uh, kind of how some of the characters felt. Uh, and their characteristics. So uh, go ahead and do the whole story. But those, um, the definitions of the words at the bottom in the crossword puzzle, you uh, you might actually want to pause this instead of turning it off, because I think that a lot of the words uh, are going to be these, not all, but some. Uh, it might be kind of hard for you to find. It doesn't even tell you what page to find them on. So do your best on that. I think you can do it. You might have to look back in the story to find a word maybe that you don't know and use the glossary too. But you might want to pause it because some of these words are there. In fact, let me just do this. Let me just be, woo, let me just be, write some more words on here that you might need. Uh, let's see. Uh, there should be eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, these are all the words you're going to use. Now, some of them, they may be spelled a little bit different, like you'll just have to see, okay? But I think you can use your glossary or a dictionary also if you need to, okay? All right, that'll be all for today.